Finally tonight, the State of the Union. Ask 10 people what they think and you're going to get five different answers. But what we find more interesting is not so much the State of the Union right now, but what people want for their country going forward. Tonight, we're joined by the founder of Hold the Line, Sean Foyt. Sean, welcome to the studio. Hey, so honored to be with you guys. Thanks for having me. Well, I'm so glad you're here because you're such a voice right now in our generation. And even people like Newsweek <laughs> are breaking articles about you. And this article this week that they broke was not totally complimentary, but it wasn't as harsh as others that have featured about you in the past, especially about leading worship protests and events in key places in our nation. And you're at the right place, but the media says at the wrong time. What do you think about this coverage that's going on right now? Yeah, I mean, it's expected. <laughs> uh, we've had, I mean, we've had hit pieces on every major, you know, news liberal station said about us. And, you know, we're kind of used to it. In fact, to be honest with you, it kind of, it kind of helps us in a weird way. It reminds us that we're actually on track with God. Like if we're pushing up against the agendas of the world and, you know, they're attacking us, we're probably right in line with where God's called us to be. Well, what do you think the average person wants when it comes to the State of the Union of America right now? We, we're facing such a, a turmoil we've never faced mm -hmm. before. Tell me what you think. Yeah, I mean, I think if you look, you know, 70 to, to 80 percent of Americans think the country's headed in the wrong direction. We just were completely and totally embarrassed by this spy balloon that, that transversed the whole continent and wasn't shot down until it was way past our borders. You know, we have, we have a, a open borders crisis. We have inflation. We have this crazy, you know, transgender sexualized agenda that's, that's, that's coming into all areas of our society, especially education. And so I think you have a lot of like, you have a lot of hopelessness, a lot of discouragement. Yeah. And uh, I'm far more interested in, in the state of the kingdom than the state of the union, to be honest with you. You were just in the U.S. Capitol, and I think it's really interesting that you are bold enough to talk about these kinds of issues, but especially, you've been there over and over, but you were there right before the State of the Union speech, just this last week, and you were praying. Tell us what you were doing there. Yeah, it's wild. I mean, that's one encouraging thing happening right now. It seems like with this regime change, you know, now Pelosi's not in charge. She doesn't have things all locked down. We were in there worshiping, wow. like early in the morning. Nobody was there. I had my guitar. I'm in there with members of Congress singing in the Capitol Rotunda. I've never even heard of that happening. It's the beginning of a new day. We're going to do that more. Worship is taking over the Capitol, and it's, it's a really exciting time. This is exciting. I'm so excited for you, and I'm so excited for what you're building. You're going your 50-state tour. Tell us one line about it. Yeah, we're, we're excited. We're calling that kingdom to the Capitol. And just like I was worshiping with my guitar inside of the Capitol Rotunda, bringing the kingdom, we're actually doing that in all 50 states across America. It's a very ambitious, wild, crazy dream that God's given us. We, 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 know, we know that it's a God dream because we can't do it by ourselves. And we're going to go to every single 50 state capital, host a Let Us Worship gathering on the steps of the state capitals. We're going to blue states, red states, all of them. And so we're excited. We want everybody to join us. It's going to be historic as we go state to state. It's really, it's really Davidic, actually. It's carrying this Davidic call like, hey, let's rally at the center place of government and authority in our state, and let's worship Jesus. And as we do that, we're going to see the church unified. We're going to see that we're going to stand up for certain bills that are coming down and, and stand against certain bills. And most importantly, we're going to notify the powers and principalities, hey, listen, the church is alive, the church is awake, and we're going to see our states hijacked with the power of God in 2023. I want to talk to you about the Grammys because you actually tweeted out today yeah. a response because this has caused kind of a civil war in the Grammy world and the Christian world where we have Sam Smith right after Madonna introduces him and he does a satanic worship performance. Even CBS News says, we're worshiping with you, Sam Smith. And then the Christians, there's backlash against the gospel recording artists from being there like Maverick City Music, Brian and Jen Johnson, Ryan Ellis, all these ones who are nominated in those categories. And you took to social media and you took it a different direction. You actually said, it's good that we're there, but, so tell us what you said. Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, listen, we're living in a spiritual war. And I think that's what, that's what even Newsweek, to, to, to come back to your first thing, that's what they were hammering me on is we're worshiping in the Capitol. And they're like, you know, Sean's saying we're living in a spiritual war. Well, we are. And I think that those are the moments like in the Grammys that broadcast across America. It's a reminder, hey, our battle's not against flesh and blood. There's ideologies and principalities that are coming against uh, the nation that are coming to pervert our kids. And so my heart behind it was, hey, listen, we're called to engage with the world. Like go to the Grammys, get award by the Grammys. Like that's great, lay, lay your accolades at the feet of Jesus. But at the same time, in the same breath, raise your voice and yeah. be like Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. And don't be afraid, don't bow like the rest of the culture. Don't bow when the music begins to play. Don't bow to the gods of this age, but rise up and encourage other people to rise up. And I think that that was a little bit of my frustration. I didn't see quite that response uh, even though everybody saw the Satan worshiping thing. I mean, it was obvious. Well, obviously more Christians watch this as well because the Grammy uh, Gospel Award is now some of our favorite musicians that Christianity celebrates. And so you have like some of the ones I mentioned before are there and they're up on stage receiving an award. So, so many Christians felt violated that at the same award yeah. ceremony, there was a satanic ritual that, take pl that took place. And I loved how you described that what would you tell Christians right now as far as those who watch both and are confused? Yeah, well, I would say it's it's obviously we're, we're in a battle. It's light versus darkness. It's good versus evil. It's the kingdom of God versus the kingdom of hell. And I want to encourage people out there like it's visible now. It's out in the open now. I mean, they're not trying to hide anything. And, and more so should we be bold about who we are, you know? The world is looking for conviction. They're looking for discernment, definition. They're looking for people who know who they are. And so my encouragement to Christians in dark spaces, that's fine, go where God's called you to go, but be a light. And, and, yeah. and, and be able to help people, be able to help people discern in the times ahead because it's getting pretty crazy. It's, it's very crazy. I don't think I've ever witnessed anything like what I just witnessed before. And I think you're the yeah. perfect person to speak into it, especially because you've been in the media and you've been such a light. And there's been those moments where, you know, you were called by Rolling Stones, a super spreader, you're wearing this shirt because you created a movie <laughs> that actually documented and talked about yeah. why you are a super spreader and why you're raising up people to be super spreaders of the gospel. And I'm so encouraged by that. And I know our audience is gonna be so encouraged by this interview tonight because of your perspective. So thanks for being here with us. Hey, thanks so much, man, for having me. Really, really an honor. That's it for Centerpoint. Up next on TVN, this month in TVN history, join Cody Crouch as he shares about the half century of miracles with the ministry. Stay tuned to TVN. I'm Sean Bowles. For all of us here at Centerpoint, good night. <laughs>